There are millions of refugees in the world today. Tara Horn gives us a look at what their lives are like as they try to reach asylum. Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They've ranged from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic that geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. The talk you're about to hear was recorded live at one of the featured Ignite events around the world. Hi. My name's Tara, and this is How to Be a Refugee, Several Not-So-Easy Steps from Oppression to Resettlement. The first step to being a refugee is oppression. Now, this step is actually easier than you might think. There are 46 countries that have produced 100,000 or more refugees each, so the odds of being born into an oppressive country are pretty good in this world. Now, of those refugee-producing countries, you can have your choice of countries with civil war, genocide, religious fundamentalists, or a capricious military dictatorship. Burma happens to have three out of four, so we'll start there. Now, as a citizen of Burma, you now have many paths to oppression. You could participate in a protest, refuse forced labor, own land the government wants, or be an ethnic minority. Your method of choice is to mouth off to a government officer collecting bribes at an illegal road checkpoint. Once you get word that government agents are asking around about you, you know you've succeeded in becoming a target for arrest and interrogation. Your next step is to flee, quickly. You now have six hours to pack a bag, collect as much cash from friends and family as you can, say goodbye, hope there aren't any officers waiting for you at the station, and hop the next overnight bus to Rangoon. You then find a hostel to stay at and try to find more family that can help with cash. You then find an agent through word of mouth who can get you out of the country immediately for $4,000 in cash and credit. You spend the next 10 days traveling to Malaysia in the back of a truck and on foot through the jungle with five other refugees. Now that you've fled Burma, your next step is to find shelter and seek asylum with the UN High Commissioner for Refugees in Kuala Lumpur. You spend your first night in the city sleeping on the floor of an underground safe house run out of an apartment by other refugees. You spend the next five days waiting in line at the UNHCR to apply for refugee status along with asylum seekers from as far as Africa and Afghanistan. Two of those nights you sleep on the sidewalk outside so you can be there when the gates open in the morning. At the end of day five, when you finally get to someone in a desk, you explain that you're from Burma and you need asylum. But they tell you that refugee registration is closed for your nationality until further notice. Your next step is to wait. While you're waiting, you find an apartment in the city with 30 other refugees, work a series of jobs in construction and factories, develop an ulcer, fall in love, get arrested and detained, deported to Thailand, and smuggled back to Malaysia twice. After two years of living as an illegal immigrant, you get word that the UNHCR has reopened refugee registration for Burmese nationals. You immediately spend another week waiting in line and lose your job, but finally get an appointment with a refugee officer. As a single healthy adult, you're given priority status five and have five more interviews over the next two years, during which they ask about your health and living situation in Malaysia. At the last one, they ask why you fled Burma, and you finally get an ID card and recognition as a refugee. After getting refugee status, they ask if you have friends or family in any of the six countries offering resettlement. You answer no, so they pick a country for you, and your case is then referred to the U.S. Embassy to start the resettlement process. Over the next six months, you have two more interviews at the Embassy, where they ask again about why you fled Burma. You have a health check, a background check, and a four-hour orientation on American culture, where you learn about toasters and child labor laws. 
After a year, you get a destination city and a flight date that leaves you 30 days to prepare. You stock up on your favorite Burmese snack, buy a new coat and a suitcase, and say goodbye again. Five years after leaving Burma, you finally arrive in America. A resettlement caseworker takes you to your apartment and shows you how to operate the stove and hot water without killing yourself. Your first night in America will be the most time you've spent alone in your entire life. Welcome home. Thank you.